Today's lesson in SureTrack is how to update progress. We're going to update actual start dates. We're going to update actual finish dates. We're going to update something called remaining days of duration. My favorite way to update an activity that's partially complete. Or you can update with percent complete, which I'll show you at the end, which I don't recommend. I've taken the project, sample project from last week where we introduced SureTrack, and as the next step, we need to learn how to update progress. This project last week started Monday of this week, October 1st. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to edit this and show you some tips and tricks on how to format columns in ways that help you solve homework 10. Homework 10 will be available later today on Blackboard once I upload it. So go to Format Columns. The Format menu, the first command is Columns. And in the Format Columns dialog box, I'm going to move this up a little higher, just below the column titles. What I'd like to have to the right of early finish is the percent complete column, just for today's demonstration. So I'm going to highlight late start. I'm going to add a blank row and I'm going to put in percent complete. Just bear with me as I make these changes. And you'll now notice that we have, hang on a second, let me slide the vertical black bar over, percent complete shown. So I'm going to go back to the format columns box. And if you just want to watch it on the screen as I demonstrate it, you'll notice that when I scroll down, percent complete is typed as two complete words. But you'll also notice percent complete is text wrapped. In Excel, we click on the text wrap toolbar button, right? SureTrack programmers use an ASCII character, which is a programming code, and I've highlighted the column title box and it's shown in blue on the screen. Above that is the edit box. So I've put the cursor in the edit box and it lets me edit the title of the column. I'm going to backspace through the end of the word complete. Backspace four times so it says COMP. I'm going to cursor with the cursor keys, there he goes again, cursor key instead of mouse. Four cursors to the left puts me to the left of the C. I am now on the right hand edge of an ASCII character that on your keyboard there is a key above the enter key. The key above the enter key, the regular command is the backslash. The command above it is two vertical lines. Everyone see that on the key above the enter key on your lab PC? The two vertical line ASCII command is a programmer's code and in SureTrack and other Primavera products, it says text wrap after the text. So I'm gonna cursor one more space to the left. What you can't see on the screen is that is a double vertical line. Even on my laptop, it looks like a solid vertical line. In programmer's code, it's the broken vertical line as on your keyboard and your PC in front of you. So now I've got the cursor on the right hand side of percent and I'm going to backspace through the T, the N, and the E, and the C. So it says PER. I don't even want that. I'm going to backspace it all out and I'm going to put the percent symbol. So I have the percent symbol, the vertical black line, which is two vertical black lines, and then COMP. I also don't like the way this column is aligned. It came out aligned right, so I click on the align column on percent complete. I select the word right. You'll see it highlighted in blue. I hit the C key on the keyboard for center, and I click OK. Now percent complete says, literally percent complete, I'm going to narrow the column. We still have this odd actual duration that carried over from last week. We're going to change that one to format columns. We're going to highlight actual duration. I'm going to backspace through all of the word duration and just leave D-U-R. 
I'm going to cursor to the left one, two, three, four times. So I'm up against actual, the L, and backspace through the L, the A, and the U. So it now says ACT, for actual, double vertical line, DUR. And you'll notice that's what it says on remaining duration is REM, double vertical line, DUR. And original duration has the same thing. Even early start, even early finish have that ASCII character telling the software to text wrap the column title. Now I have some columns that are too wide. I'm going to just drag the right border of the act duration column. That looks pretty good. We'll just live with that for right now for the class demonstration. Let's update this schedule. This schedule says we have a start milestone. It said we were going to start Monday of this week. Oh, one last comment. If you don't have the activity form open at the bottom, go to the view menu and you see I've already selected activity form, the third item down. You must have the activity form open to update progress and sure track schedules. So with the activity form visible, I'm going to tell the software, start milestone. It was supposed to start Monday of this week. It didn't start. The bad news is, from the superintendent, is it started Tuesday of this week. How do we tell the software what an actual start date is? With the activity highlighted, to the left of the word early start in the activity form, directly below the name start milestone, there's a box that's a white box. I'm going to select it with the left mouse click and I'm going to tell SureTrack, okay, start milestone started. You have to tell milestones they've started. You have to tell milestones they've finished. You have to tell activities they've started. You have to tell activities they've finished. If you don't tell it, the software doesn't know what you're doing. So the actual start on the start milestone, it still shows the original start of October 1st. I click on it, I get the drop down arrow, I click on the drop down arrow, I get the calendar. It actually started Tuesday morning, October 2nd. So I double click October 2nd, that entered correctly, and I click on OK. Now you look in the early start field, it says October 2nd, but what's missing is the capital A that says it started. The percent completes 100%, that's correct. The software doesn't know that the column needs to be wider. Since I had these columns initially barely wide enough to hold the dates, I need to drag the width of the early start column. Now I can see the A for actual. I'm also going to widen the early finish column a small amount. So the actual A will show up there when I put an actual finish in. So activity 1000, start milestone, started on Tuesday morning, October 2nd, and it's 100% complete. And you'll notice to the right, the start milestone is slid to the right by one day. The vertical red line where I park my cursor, don't move it, I park my cursor on the vertical red line. The vertical red line is named data date. It originally, the data date was Monday of this week. It has a double headed white arrow. We're not going to drag that. I prefer to enter the date manually, not drag the bar. In homework 10, what I'm teaching you today is all typed up. All these step by step procedures. Let's select activity B. Well, we know the project started Tuesday of this week. I mean, it's activity A, sorry. We know the project started on Tuesday. Activity A had to start. So on activity A in the activity form, I will click on started. When did it start? Tuesday morning. So I click that date field. The drop down arrow appears. I click on the arrow. The calendar appears. I double click October 2nd. I click OK. Now you'll notice the bar is moved to line up with the start milestone. It is now has an actual start of October 2nd. Well, today is Thursday. Let's pretend it's tomorrow afternoon, October 5. It's the end of the work day. And you call the superintendent and you say, what'd you get done this week? Well, you know, we started a day late because of the rain. Let's pretend it rained this week on Monday. Actually, it rained today. 
And you know, it's a five day activity, Larry. I don't, we're not gonna be finished. We're on this four days. Yes, we started a day late, but we're not done. Well, then when will you be done? You ask the superintendent a direct question. He says, well, you said it'd take five days. We'll be done Monday afternoon. It's a five day activity. You told us there's no overtime in the bid, just like homework number one, right? So it's gonna take my crew one more work day. We'll be done the end of Monday. I said, okay. That's fair. I told you no overtime was allowed. You're going to do a five day activity in five days. So we're sitting here on Friday afternoon, October 5. We know that it's going to finish the end of next Monday, which is October 8th, right? But on Friday afternoon, how much work is left to be done? One day or two days? We'll work four days on a five day activity. It's Friday afternoon. How many days are left to work? Superintendent says, you give me Monday, it'll be done. So the remaining day duration, the RD, is one. So on activity A, I go to the remaining duration, and I left mouse click, and my cursor is on the right side of the number five. I backspace through the five, and I put in a number one, and I click OK. So on Friday afternoon, we know we have one more work day. Now what we haven't told the software, and it's doing some odd drafting here, is we haven't told the software that we're at the end of Friday. The software still thinks we're at the beginning of Monday the 1st. Here's a caution. The data date is the beginning of the workday. It doesn't think any other way except the beginning of the workday. So if we're done on Friday afternoon, October 5, and the data date can't be told to be 5 o'clock on Friday, what do I have to tell the day to date? It's actually Monday morning the 8th. So the way we update this, and this will be printed in homework 10 also, is under tools, we'll go to the schedule dialog box, and there's several points I want to make about the schedule dialog box. Project day to date, after you enter all the progress of your activities, we'll tell it not the 5th of October, we'll say Monday morning the 8th. Now we haven't started work yet, but the software says the day to date is the beginning of the day. Since the day to date is the beginning of the day, we work through Friday afternoon the 5th, and we don't work Saturday, and we don't work Sunday, because the boss says there's no overtime, you need to tell the software the day to date is the following Monday morning. In homework 10, that caution is typed. Let's look at some of the other things in this schedule box. Show open ends as critical. Show open ends is non-critical. I have mine set as non-critical. With it set as non-critical, a dog without a tail doesn't turn red. If I set it as critical, an activity without a successor, an activity that has an open end will automatically turn red and lie to you that it's critical. So how do you want to do your scheduling? The contractor building the ABE project their scheduling standards say it shall be set at non-critical all the time. We don't want a non-critical activity turning red because you had it set at critical. It's only critical when total float equals zero, and only when total float equals zero does it turn red. So we shut this feature off. The next one down says critical activities have total float less than or equal to zero. If you ever change this to any other value, it's unethical. If I made that a 10, and I can't even make myself type a 10, any activity with a total flow to 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or 0 will turn red. If you do that for your employer, or he or she asks you to do that, you should quit. It's unethical. This is where the software can be told to lie. Why would a contractor put a 10 in there? Anything within two weeks of the critical path with 10 days of float or less will print red. The contractor hides the total float column in the printout and says to the owner, see, the whole job's critical. Well, that's not true. So the contractor files a claim. The owner hires me. I ask for all your SureTrack files and electronic discovery. I open your SureTrack files. You've changed this to 10. You told the software to lie about the critical path, and now I have what we say legally, we have impeached your claim, and I can't wait to tell the judge and the jury that you lied in your original claim. 
the good news is you have the ability to not lie as a professional. The bad news is, is your competition can go in there and monkey with the software and lie. That's one of the things in an ENR article that many people have complained about is the unethical behavior in the industry with software that can be told to lie about the critical path. The good news is you can edit the software. The bad news is you can edit the software and get fired. So I'm telling you today, don't ever do this. Below it says passes. I have four backward passes turned on. I like to shut them off when I do scheduling. That's my personal preference, so I'm going to shut this off. We now need to tell the software that, uh, oh, we forgot to do that, sorry. Tool schedule. Do we change the day to date? No, we, yes, we did. I said October 8th, you know, and it did move the day to date line. There is a clock face up here, round red face with, you see the little clock face toolbar button? That is called schedule now. That runs the forward and backward pass, and when I click the forward and backward pass, it paints the activity royal blue up to the new data date. I many times on schedule updating left the forward backward pass off so I could just enter the data now when the schedule is 90 pages long, you know how long it takes to calculate the forward and backward pass? I've had it take seconds. I'm too impatient for seconds. It seems like an eternity to me. So on data entry, I'll shut off the forward backward pass when I have all the actual starts and actual finishes, then I'll hit the clock face and I'll calculate it and I'll see what my schedule looks like. You'll notice that activity A is now 80% complete. We've worked four days on a five-day activity. We have one day left. Now let's fast forward. We work another week, so we're not Friday the 5th. We're Friday, October 12th. You're updating the schedule again. And as I note in the homework, always do a file save as and create another version of the schedule. I'm going to skip that step for speed. Now we're Friday, October 12th. What happened to activity A? Did you finish it on the 8th? Yes, you finished it on the 8th. So with activity A highlighted, I'm going to go actual finish Monday, October 8th and say OK. It now shows 100% complete. It shows an actual finish of the 8th and actual start of the 2nd. But we're sitting here Friday night, October 12th and activity B. Well, what happened to activity B? Did it start? Well, when did it start? Did it start on Tuesday as planned? Yeah, it started on Tuesday. We got with it, boss. But what else happened? Your superintendent knows you're behind. Your superintendent analyzes it. He says, you know what? I have some great news. Without working overtime, in four days, we finished activity B. You're really going to like the cost report. And you can tell our boss's boss, we're back on schedule. I'm not going to discuss how they collapse this to four days. So we're going to tell the software we finished on Friday, October 12th. So I've clicked the finished box, and I'm going to change this to Friday, October 12th, the day it finished. Let me move this across a little so we can see the time scaling. Now I need to tell the software it's Friday night, October 12th, which is really Monday morning, October 15th. So I'm going to go to Tool Schedule and change the day to date to the first thing Monday morning, October 15. You notice I still have the forward and backward pass shut off. Now I'm going to hit the clock face, make sure that everything's calculated. So here's what it says. We have finished activity B and have highlighted actual duration of four. The original duration of B was five. So actual duration is calculated by the software. You don't enter a value. It looks at your actual starts and your actual finish dates and it gives you an as-built duration. So the original duration is your plan. The remaining duration is how many days are left. And on the first week, we told activity A it had one day left. When an activity is finished, it has zero day remaining. You'll notice now for the next week, activity C has a predicted start date of the 16th. Why is it showing that? 
Let me make sure I've done. 